Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about analyzing experiments that have two explanatory variables, but when you have an unbalanced or possibly an incomplete design. In a previous video, linked to up here, we talked about what you can do when you have an experiment with two factors that has a balanced, complete design. And so this is going one step further. We saw in that video that the primary techniques that we suggested was to use uh, a two-way ANOVA model, and that two-way ANOVA model we used is with the interaction, and then we addressed scientific questions of interest using uh, a, a set of contrasts. Okay. All right, so let's suppose that in the design that we talked about before, which was this experiment where we had variety and density for tomato plants, we have a whole set of plots, and we randomly determined uh, in each plot what that treatment density combination would be. And it just turns out that as you are collecting your samples, one of your samples for yield somehow got contaminated. So you're just down one observation for one variety density combination. It turned out to be variety B and density of 30. And so you started the experiment with a balanced design, but now the data you've actually collected is unbalanced. And it's unbalanced because you have one fewer observation of that particular variety density combination. All right. Fortunately, it basically changes nothing about the approach that we used before. And so we can take a look at the data. The only difference you see from the data we saw in the previous video is that there's one fewer blue observations here in that variety density combination. As usual, I will update this plot uh, for those that are colorblind and also use symbols in addition to the colors to get ideas across. All right, so you can still do your summary statistics. You'll just notice here in those summaries that the line that corresponds to variety B and a density of 30, which is the second to last line, you'll notice that there are only two observations instead of the usual three. Again, just demonstrating that the data are unbalanced. We can still conduct our two-way ANOVA table, um, and we can still interpret this two-way ANOVA table in the same way that we did before. In particular, we can look at the interaction to see if the effect of variety depends on density and vice versa. The relatively large p-value indicates that there's no evidence to say that they aren't this, uh, that there is an effect of one on the other. Uh, but nonetheless, we're going to move forward with that interaction model just like we did last time to answer scientific questions of interest. And so here we have a um, an estimate. Well, using contrast to answer scientific questions of interest. This is the page for variety. So we get estimated mean yields for each variety averaged over the level of density. And we have pairwise differences between each of those combinations of variety uh, at averaged across the densities. We have the same kind of page that we can get for density. So here the density is 10, 20, 30, 40. We have the estimated means. We have the pairwise comparisons, both of which that are averaged over the levels of variety. Finally, we can conduct the uh, EM means on the interaction, and that just provides us the estimated means for every combination of variety and density, and the comparisons for each variety and density. Um, and now these are no longer averaged over variety or averaged over density, but instead are statements about what happens at particular values of variety uh, or density. And so the, the bottom line here is that when you have unbalanced data using the techniques that we've talked about, uh, it really doesn't change anything about what you do, right? I'm still going to use ANOVA tables, in particular that interaction p-value to address um, questions about the effect of one explanatory variable on the other. But then we're going to use contrast to address questions about uh, those factors, right? Both average over the level of the other factor or uh, at particular values of the other factor. So basically it's the same. Now, when it comes to an incomplete design, um, incomplete uh, could either happen by design or again it could happen after the fact. So suppose that somehow, who knows why, but none of your samples from the variety B sam uh, density 30 combination were able to be obtained, right? Maybe, right? They got thrown in the trash somewhere and who knows why, right? Okay, so now we um, the analysis becomes more complicated than it did under the unbalanced design. We can see here in this plot that uh, we are missing a combination of density 30 and variety B. So you'll see that there's only three points there uh, toward the bottom for density 30. Uh, those three are the variety A, and so we're just missing the variety B. 
So this is just uh, showing you that right, these data are missing that particular combination. We can see the same thing if we do summary statistics for each of the variety density combinations. You'll see here that we're missing one of the rows, and the row that we're missing is that density B, sorry, variety B, density 30. All right, so what do we do? The approach that I'm going to suggest is that you use a one-way ANOVA, and that you use that one-way ANOVA combined with contrast to answer scientific questions of interest. So, for example, if you're trying to look at what the differences is, are for B and C averaged over the levels of density, then really what you want to do is only compare them averaged over the values 10, 20, and 40. And the reason is because the combination of density B, sorry, density 30 and variety B uh, is missing, right? We don't have data there. And so if you were thinking about averaging uh, over density for B, and averaging over density for C, and perhaps just taking the data and, and averaging all the data for B, and then averaging all the data for C and comparing those two, you would be misled because that average for B does not have that density of 30. And so what you want here is to just compare B versus C at the densities where we have data for both. So you can see we only have data for both at 10, 20, and 40. And so when we do the comparisons, between B and C, we want to only do it for 10, 20, and 40. And so if we're going to write down the contrast, this is the expression you might write. So we have one third times the mu 31, mu 32, mu 34. That's the line for C. That does not include density 30. And then we compare that to the average of mu 21, 22, and 24. That's for variety B. Okay, so that's the approach that we're going to use. We're going to use it for both uh, the comparison of B versus C, but as well, we're comparing A and B, and if we compare A and C now, we actually can use all of the densities because we have observations for A and C at all of those densities. Okay, so um, again, as we're constructing models, uh, if we're treating this as a one-way ANOVA, we're going to have a reference level. That reference level, uh, we're going to choose to be C40, just like we did in the previous slide. Since there are 11 levels of treatment dense, sorry, variety density combination, when we take one of those reference levels out, there's going to be 10 levels left. So we'll have to create 10 dummy variables. Uh, here is the same notation we were using before. So VI is the variety, DI is the density, YI is the yield. And it, our regression model is going to look like this. And now this is a bit different than what you've seen before because these indicator functions now have two quantities inside them. And these indicator functions are only going to be true if that combination is there, okay? So we have right, that very first one, so we have beta one times the indicator that variety for the observation i is a, and the density for observation i is 10. And now if you look through and scan through, you'll see that there's one combination that's missing. And that combination is the variety B density 30, and that's because, again, we have no observations at that uh, combination. I guess technically you see two combinations missing, so you see the B30 missing and the C40. Of course, we chose C40 as the reference level, and that's why it's missing. All right, so we can fit the model, right, as a sort of standard regression model. We can uh, treat it as a two-way ANOVA, so perhaps we forgot that the data were incomplete. Um, and if we do so with the interaction, we'll see a two-way ANOVA table that looks like this. And so the question right now to you is, can you tell just from this table that the design is incomplete? Or maybe more accurately, how can you tell that it's incomplete? So you might want to pause the video right here and take a look at trying to figure out how you can tell from this table that the data are actually incomplete. Okay, did you figure it out? Uh, I hope that you noticed here that the degrees of freedom don't line up. So variety 2, density 3, the interaction should be the product of those two, so the interaction should be 6, but the interaction is actually only 5, and that is sort of a giveaway that the design was incomplete, that it's missing a combination of variety and density. Okay, so instead we're going to treat this as a one-way ANOVA, so if we treat it as a one-way ANOVA, a quick way to do that in R is just to do variety colon density as the explanatory variable. You'll see we here we have our 10 levels for variety density combination. 
since we had 11 levels, but one of those was the reference level, we have 10 parameters that are included for that combination of variety and density. Um, we're not going to do too much with this table because we're going to move forward with our analysis based on contrast. Uh, all right, so um, here are the contrasts that we're going to construct. We have to do this by hand because it's not going to be uh, immediately clear to, uh, well, maybe it is. Yeah, means might have figured out how to do it, but we're going to do it manually by constructing contrast here. And so you can see in those contrast lines that there's one combination missing. So you'll see a little bit of a gap where the B30 combination should have been. But otherwise, you can see that the comparisons that we do for C versus B and A versus B uh, just have one third, one third, one third, and negative one third, negative one third, negative one third. In contrast, the A minus C comparison or AC comparison has one quarter, one quarter, one quarter, and negative a quarter, negative a quarter, negative a quarter, negative one quarter. Okay. All right, so we can do that, and we finally uh, get our contrast out here, and that's the way that we can answer questions about A versus B versus C averaged over the levels of density. If we're interested in what happens at a particular value for density, then we can use the EM means package uh, to just use the interaction here. And now we get an estimated mean for every density variety combination that exists in the experiment. So you have those lines. And then at the bottom, you have the pairwise comparisons. So for any particular density variety combination that you want to compare, you can do so here. Of course, there's going to be missing any comparison with the variety B density 30 because there was no data for that combination. All right, so when your data are unbalanced, the analysis is pretty straightforward, just the same way we had before. But when your data is incomplete, when you are missing a combination of the treatment variables, uh, then it, what we tend to do is use a one-way ANOVA table, um, or one-way ANOVA analysis, let's say, which is akin to just using that interaction term in the way that R writes its models to uh, fit the model, and then we use contrast to address scientific questions of interest. All right, now the next video is going to talk about what happens when you are really interested. Your main scientific question of interest is what is the optimal density you to use, and perhaps it depends on variety or perhaps it doesn't. And so we're going to see how to analyze that question uh, in the next video. Hope to catch you there.